I want to invite our next over-caffeinated uh, fellow to, to step up because he's a show queen and I, I know he loves an award show um, and I want to I give him every moment that he can to, to stand up here. <laughs> Where are you going to? Okay, there. Oh, oh you're going to be over my shoulder. That could, that could be difficult. Um, Damian Clark and I are a dangerous combination, um, um, and it's, it's really, it's, it's a loss to the culture that we may not be working together for too much longer, but everybody has to graduate sooner or later, I suppose. Damian was drawn to the University of Maryland in part because of its thriving LGBT community and the opportunities available here for studies in gender and sexuality. Now, as I mentioned before, I, I am a graduate student employee supervisor, and when you go about the business of hiring a, a graduate assistant for a program like mine, you hope, you know, that they'll show up for work and, uh, and, and have good phone presence and be patient uh, with the dean's office and the public who, who wants advice on sexual matters or gender identity or whatever they might call in with. So you don't dare to dream that they will treat every single moment in the office as an opportunity to change the world. But that's the way it was with Damien from day one. I first worked with him in a large lecture course that I was teaching for the English department. He was and probably ever shall be the best teaching assist assistant that I have ever had. He was bright, of course but also supremely conscientious. He was creative in his input about syllabus and assignment design. He was willing to do anything, and I really do mean anything, to help make the course both challenging and satisfying for students. And he was also willing to put up with my technological, uh, the, the profound limits of my technological knowledge and to manage, I, I really, I don't know what I'll ever do if I have to teach one of those lecture courses again and I don't have Damien to, to, to manage all of those things for me because it's all quite beyond me. But in the program office for the past three years, he has been my right-hand man, my body man, as I have publicly described him, or as it were, my girl Friday, the indispensable Emily to my insanely demanding Miranda Priestley, as we used to joke in homage to the Devil Wears Prada before our relationship became a tapestry of glee jokes and sing-alongs. Now, to those of you who have admired the gorgeous posters we put out for the annual spring lecture series in LGBT studies, no matter how much the dean cuts our budget, know that those posters would be far less gorgeous if it weren't for Damien's obsessive attention to detail and design. And to those of you who have gorged yourselves on heaping platters of cheese and sausage from goodies to go, or passed up the fruit platters that we kept ordering even when it became clear that no one ever really wanted to eat healthy, know that you have Damien to thank for all that nourishment, all that elegance, all those leftovers you took back to your apartments and devoured while you were writing papers for Christina Handhart. To those of you who think that all those fancy folks we bring in to give all those lectures are unfailingly nice and never prone to order illicit glasses of wine from room service when we have told them repeatedly that we can't buy booze for them, know that it is Damien, or was Damien, who makes it all right before the state swoops in and shuts us down for violating the state's liquor laws. Damien did all this work brilliantly and without complaint, and he did it while steadily, relentlessly, working away at his dissertation during his off hours. Trust me. That is no easy thing to do, but he persisted because he believed in all the work he was doing <laughs> and he saw how the pieces fit together. I am in awe of his discipline and dedication 
and grateful to him for his commitment to the work of our program and the life of our community. Both are better for your having been here, my dear friend. You deserve a pride award, no doubt, but I really wish I could do for you today is to write across the sky with letters to Damien with love. Congratulations on all you've done and all we know you will do. Thank you. Um, Michael is a hard act to follow. So uh, just, I would like to say thank you to Luke and the Office of LGBT Equity um, for hosting and doing Lavender Graduation. Um, I do come from one of those generations that in high school would have never thought to have something like this. And if I had gone to college when I was 18, I would have never had something like this either. Um, fortunately, I waited. And fortunately, I came to Maryland. Um, it is because of the LGBT studies program and the LGBT equity office that I chose Maryland because I wanted to be a part of this. I wanted to make a difference, um, not just with my scholarship, but with my teaching. And when I walked into Mary Lee's office, uh, much like Michael walked into my office when I first met him, um, I said, I really want to teach in this program. I really want to teach LGBT lit. Please let me teach. I really want to teach. I didn't know that I would be getting so much more than just being able to teach, that I would get to know these students and teach many of the students who are in this room graduating today, who I'm very proud of. Um, but to be a part of the program and help it grow has meant the world to me. And I wanna say thank you to Dr. Mary Lee Lindemann for giving me so many opportunities upon opportunities to grow and really be a part of something and, and really, and I love you, so thank you. Um, and that's it. Uh, I want to say thanks to my mom who is here, who has always been super proud of me and who has always shown me courage and shown me what it's like to be courageous. Um, and a lot of this I, I owe to her. So thanks. Thank you. Congratulations to the graduates. <laughs>